What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of 27 and Q alongside that man right there, the two-time Super Bowl champ, former New York football great running back, number 27, Brandon Jacobs. I'm Rich Canunas. As always, we appreciate you guys keeping us locked in 27 and Q on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, follow us on socials as well as the show is really picking up some steam. And tonight's not going to be any different. We're hoping to hear from uh, Anthony Durrell. Huge matchup taking on Caleb Plant. They'll be on the undercard of the Wilder Helenus. Uh, a huge weekend for boxing, by the way. Haney, yeah. Uh, it's fight night with the females as well. Mayer and, and Shields and, and, and Bum Gardner. Uh, so many female fighters out there as well. But uh, an NFL, let us not forget uh, a snooze fest, uh, Minyana tomorrow night, Washington, in Chicago. Right now, that's a pick 'em, so I can well, I can pick and choose yeah. not to watch that game. A snooze <laughs> fest, a snooze fest. It's snooze fest, as we like to say. Big man, how are you? I'm doing great, Rich. I mean, I'm, I can't I can't be more excited about the week of sports coming up here. Um, you know, I always go through my little schedule and what I got going on. You know, I got the middle school, San Francisco Middle School playing in the uh, semifinals for their league. Uh, uh, the high school is off on the bye week. Um, you know, just it's still a good week of football. We got uh, Alabama, Tennessee action. I'll be going to that game with the boys. Oh, nice. I was going on a recruiting trip. With that, uh, just some big time. You know, you got Devin Haney, Cambosis going on. Uh, as you say, you know, Wilder. We got we got Darrell Plant. We got Clarissa. She- I mean, we got a lot of good things going on uh, this weekend uh, for sports. You know, for NFL. Got a lot of great games coming up. Uh, a lot of great games that you want to sit down and not miss a, a second of it. So stay tuned for some great entertainment coming up here when it comes to sports. Yeah, these cards are really good, man. I mean, Russell's going to be in action against Emmanuel Rodriguez. Uh, Vito Milanicki is in action as well in that Wilder. So it's a good opportunity for some of these young fighters to showcase themselves. And uh, as we mentioned, hopefully in a couple of minutes, we'll hear from the veteran uh, Darrell. Uh, you know, with the NFL week five, it is amazing because you had the issue the other night with uh, Devontae Adams. And now all of a sudden it reminds me of the Brady Bunch episode when they were in court and they dropped the bookcase, and the guy who had the fake neck brace swung his head around. We knew he was faking it. I'm not going to sit here and say that the guy's faking it, but, I mean, it's uh, like the heat I'm of the moment. I'm going to say he's faking it. Don't nobody – I mean, I didn't see the guy. Uh, I've see, I seen the fall, obviously. I saw that. I saw the push. Uh, <laughs> does this guy have on a neck brace? Rich, I, didn't, I didn't see any of that. Please tell, no, please tell I was just me. Making, no, I was please saying tell it, me you don't have on a neck brace. No, no, I was saying there. it just reminded me of the episode, man. I mean, that, that's uh, a big, bigger lawsuit that is, right that there. Is, that is BS right there to the fullest. We we'll figure it out that hard. But, hey, he deserves some type of, some, some type of conversation. Guys, can't just, you can't just make those type of mistakes, man. You can't let your anger get the best of you. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's, there's no excuses for a lot of, you know, you know, for that, man. Which is... It's interesting because if you're going to charge Devonte Adams with a misdemeanor assault, then what the hell do you charge Draymond Green with? Who basically, I don't want to hear this when I played back in the day, not you, NBA guys, when I played, you know, the video, if it's not on video, the, the Knicks got in brawls and, and Jordan and, and Kerr and all that, man, he basically flat up and, and snuck him. That's yeah, exactly he, what he, did. He, he investigated the whole thing. I don't like I said, I don't know what the argument was or what they was talking about going back and forth. But I do believe he investigated the whole thing. He was he was in this space. You talking crap back and forth to another man, then you go brush up against him and braise him and bump into him, and he pushes you off of him and you and you retaliate with a punch. Right? I just think Draymond Green was wrong for that on, 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 on so many different levels. I saw his apology that he put up, but I, I, like I said, man, I never made a mistake and never actually got into it with any of my teammates, and we played a rough sport like football with tempers flare all the time. Uh, I just I just think that, that that part, I just think that was wrong, man, and I, and I think that was, that, that was a real soft move by him. Yeah, he's been fine not suspended. I would imagine, too, they don't want to suspend him if they're going to get their rings, right, and you're at home for the home opener, but I still think it's Bush League. You got to send a message. You just can't do that. Like, you mentioned you never got in those scuttle buffs with teammates. I'm sure it's maybe different with maybe inner squad scrimmages, so to speak. Hot out there, July, you know, late July, early August. The, the tempers are flaring a little bit. You guys want to start hitting. But to go up to another teammate and punch him like that, 
I mean, God forbid, you know, he could have fell back, hit his head. I mean, so many things. And why? Because you guys are going back and forth, breaking each other's balls. And, you know, he's going to turn around and say, well, I was disrespected. I mean, no, you watch that video. Now, are we having this conversation if there's no video? We're not having a conversation if there's no video. We'll never know about it. Yeah, I, I just think it's a bad look. I see, for me, I can't trust a teammate like that. I can't. Absolutely not. I'm with you. You know, uh, so you never got in any type of altercation. With none of my team, with any of my teammates, hell no, nah, I, I would never. I mean, and it's not that you know we just got some arguments and, and, and stuff like that. But you know, I've stopped a few. I've stopped, you know, some people from getting into some, you know, some stuff. Uh, I, remember, I remember. I mean, this was later on in my career. You know, in my last year, uh, it was, it was Demontre Moore rookie year, and and. I think JPP did something to him. It was it was out of line, and kid was pissed off, and I had to talk him off the ledge. But uh, you know, it ended up working out. I've never seen my you know none of my teammates get into it. I've never been into it with any of my teammates. Yeah, even when they're trash talking you, you just kind of just keep bringing it to the ass. Bring it to the ass. You will trash talk. I'm I'm gonna sit over here. I'm gonna keep running through your shit. You gonna keep trash talking. I'm gonna keep coming. <laughs> I ain't got too much to tell you, but I used to be out trash talking too. Trash talk with, with the best of them, man, but with no blows ever came to, you know, we never came to blows and none of that. So yeah, I, never I, even called anyone out of the name. How's he not suspended? I don't understand that. Well, I, because I, I don't think it's NBA business more than Golden State business. I think that that'd be a decision that Golden State would have to make. And I don't see them making that mistake. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see them making that decision on, um, on uh on a uh, suspended dream on like like over know, there. It, would, it, would, it would have to be a team decision you're saying so you keep it in house see i but here's the problem the video is leaked and by the way the guy that turned around and took the video i'm not going to sit here and fault him for getting paid two million from tmz but you might want to kind of you know control your house so to speak get the affairs in order like that 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 should not leak or slip or get out. He, there. TMZ gave the man two million. Two million, I believe, was offered. I'm giving him. him I'm, I'm giving him. I'm giving him the. T- I'm giving him the tape too. <laughs> Here, look. This is what happened. I wish I had sound for you. I'm sorry, brother, but this is what I got off of two million. I'm definitely giving it up. Draymond Green might have gave it up for an extra two million to play with. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, how did uh, people are asking how they paid for it? I mean. I don't know. And then there's this conspiracy that, you know, why uh, Draymond kind of leaked it so he can turn around and go play for the Lakers. <laughs> well, that's coming anyway. That, that, like, that's coming anyway. I don't yeah, think I mean, you don't bring him back. I just think he was wrong. And that was a soft thing. That was soft for him to do that. It's just a bad look. I mean, if it, yeah, it's, it's if, horrible. If that's the NFL, you don't think the league would step in where you think no. it still would have been kept in house. It would have kept in house. It would have been kept in house and in, in, in the, in, cause it wasn't done in the NBA game. I know. Controlled practice. Of. Yeah. Controlled practice. Right. That's something yeah. Golden State has to make, you know, have to make that decision on. Uh, Giants got a big one. Their punter is still over in London. I believe the uh, Scottish hammer. I yeah. know. I saw that. Passport issues. Yeah, but don't you have a liaison when when you guys traveled? Wasn't there someone to handle that stuff? No, oh, you got to go get that stuff yourself. You go get that stuff and do everything. And we'll do do all you need to do. Well, you, I don't know. Coming back, I know going to London, we got on the. We didn't have we didn't have to show or flash any of that stuff. Just yeah. to come back, we needed to do it though. Uh, they are sitting at five and a half, six point dogs right now, as it stands against Baltimore. Uh, you know, not the sexiest slate of games. I mean, the marquee games, uh, if you want to talk Giants, Ravens, Bills, Kansas City, Bills are laying two and a half, uh, which is crazy. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is rarely uh, a home dog. And then Dallas and Philly, and Philly is laying six against the Cowboys. Looks like the Cowboys are going to stick with Cooper Rush. And rightfully so. You play the hot hand. You give it another week to bring back Dak. Absolutely. And, and that's that's one of my games I had picked too, but I got the, the, the you know, like that, you just named them all. I, I had the Vikings versus, you know, the Vikings Dolphins. I want to see what the Dolphins could come out and do. They, they've they lost what last, what, two, right? And no quarterbacks. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Bridgewater. I don't know what's going to happen with the quarterback. I, I do yeah. get there, but I do want to see. I want to, I want to more so see how the Vikings can play against a good defense. Uh, you know, with, with them being 4 and 1 and they hadn't been 4 and 1 since who knows when. Yeah. 
So right now they're laying three and a half on that one. Um, as I mentioned, Baltimore actually uh, lines crept to six, six and a half. I think it's going to close at five and a half. I, I think you'll see some money on the Giants. Uh, Bills in Kansas City, as I alluded to, Denver and the Chargers, which that might be, you're going to watch that just maybe for the coaching blunders mm -hmm. with Staley, where, you know, a player currently, Allen comes out the other day on Twitter and says, you know, what the F are you doing with some of the play calling? And then you got Denver with uh, your guy Hackett, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, right now just seems like he's beyond in over his head. And we did see the first firing in the NFL was Matt Rule on Monday with Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's a disgrace. Not a bad parting gift. He's getting eight hundred forty thousand uh, for the next. I think it was well. I think it's about eight million. What was it? Eighty something odd months, or maybe forty eight something odd months. It doesn't matter. That's not a bad parting gift. No, it's not a bad point if at all. <laughs> not that, at all. Yeah, it, that, that man, that team, whew, talk about not not being able to figure it out what you're going to do with the quarterback. Talk right? about you, a forest. Talk, talk, talk about a real forest fight, man. Yeah, it is. I mean, because you brought in, you know, Darnold, you brought in Baker Mayfield. He's going to be out for two to six weeks. I mean, he looks like his career arc, right? I mean, and, and maybe he, I hate to say it, maybe he is kind of like, uh, a wide receiver killer right we saw him and beckham in cleveland and now dj moore is uh he's on the the rumor to be traded you know that's kind of a wholesale uh i guess you can say send off with the nfl so uh but we will get into that in the uh second portion of the show we're waiting to see if uh we got our man anthony uh connecting to us for a couple moments there he is Anthony Durrell getting set to take on Caleb Plant. Kind enough to join us, 2072. Anthony, what's going on, pal? What's going on? You all right? We are good, man. How's everything? Oh, it's good, man. It's blessed. I'm blessed, man. Blessed and highly favored. <laughs> and what's going on with you, bro? How you doing? What's up, B.I.? I mean, I'm all right, man. I'm just sitting here, man, waiting on this thing to uh, kick off on Saturday, man. I'm, I mean, I'm, yeah, man, it's a lot I'm, of good I'm, fights on Saturday, man. Whole yeah. lot. Real good fights on Saturday, but I think mm -hmm. yours, I think yours, you know, was one of the fights that mean the whole, you know, that I mean the most. You asked me, you know, out of the division, you know, you know, fought some pretty good guys. You got Caleb Plant coming up. Uh, you know, what, you know, he's talking a lot, man. He's being, you know, yeah. I guess, I don't, I don't know if he's got a real problem or if, or if he's just doing one hell of a job selling the fight, but he, he's talking, man. Yeah, he can talk, man. I'm I'm a little older, so I don't need to do all that all that talking like that, man. I did my talking when I was his age too, so you know I just let sit back, relax, and let him talk. Let him run out of breath. <laughs> let him run out of breath. I hear that. Do, do, do you take it though, and when when you got a fighter who the best they can throw at you is who have you fought? Is that you know? Do you take that as come on, man? Look at my resume. Look at my track record. That's is that a, a a slight on you a disrespect and and how do you uh I, I guess you know what would a retort be you know because i saw you guys going back and forth and i know there's that bad blood which potentially makes for a nice action-packed violent fight come saturday night but when when they throw that you know your resume against my resume who you fought how do you take that do you take that as a as a disrespect or that's just someone just talking shit yeah, that's just somebody just talking, man. He know I fought better opposition than he fought. I think he fought two – well, I know he fought two guys with the name, and that's Uskatagi and Kay, I mean, and Canelo. Yeah. That's it. And I asked him to name somebody else that he fought, you know, and he couldn't. You know, he, he froze up. But, you know, Styles make fights. You know, you never know until you get in the ring, you know, and fight. But I'm going in there. I'm trying to – man, Not I'm trying to do damage. Bro. Yeah, I'm trying to do damage, man. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when you start talking about the opposition, I mean, you've been in the ring with one of the most feared middleweights already. I mean, you asked me and, been, uh, and David Benavidez, nobody want to fight him. Because yeah. Canelo was, was trying to do, he was trying to do everything in his power not to run into Benavidez. So, I mean, and, and you got Charlo out there. I mean, yep. the middleweight, I mean, I think there's a lot of good fighters out there in the middle, you know, in that middleweight division, man. And, For and sure. I, and and, and I never too. shied away from nobody. I never, every time they asked me, you know, brought up a name and let's fight. I don't care. Yeah. No, I'll yeah fight you've anybody. always been like uh, that. that. And that, yep. And that's how I'm always going to be, man. But, 
you know, this this is just another stepping stone, man, for my legacy, man. That's all. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you, man, what made me a fan, you and your brother both, man, it was in 2009. I think Andre fought Carl Froch. Hmm. Uh, did some dirty shit, you know, whatever it was, and that shit erupted. I mean, y'all was, I mean, that shit was crazy. I'm like, man, I like, I, I like, uh, and then I found out he had a, a younger brother, man. Like, so, and then we, and then I ended up meeting y'all, and I'm like, man, the boy's cool as hell, and they good fighters. So I ended up being a big fan, like ever since 2009, man. So I've been following y'all for a long time, man, as you know. But uh, yeah, you know, man, I, I'm real, I'm really excited about. Uh, this old Caleb Plant uh, fight you got coming up here, man. And um, I wish I could come to it. I got to go to a college football game instead, though. So, yeah, man. You got to work, stunt, man. man. I understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand. man. That Tennessee-Alabama game is going to be nice. Yeah, it's going to be, nice. gonna be crazy. Tennessee. It's going to be crazy. Hey, yeah, hey, man. Hey, Ant, I'm, I'm curious. And look, man, we, we know you're not going to give the game plan away. Um, and I want to try to pry you on that. You know, we'll, we'll see how it transpires on Saturday night. But uh, when you watch some of Caleb's fights, I mean, you know, I mean, you got to call it the way you see it, right? At times he likes to get on that bicycle a little bit and counter. I mean, does that kind of, you know, knowing you're an aggressive fighter, you kind of want to come forward. I know you don't want to chase him over 12 rounds, right? That would be frustrating as hell. It's not going to be aesthetically pleasing, but do you kind of take that in consideration? All right. I, I got a guy that has a tendency to get on the bicycle. I'll try to make those adjustments early on kind of, Forget about the feeling out process because the last thing you want to do is give up some rounds. Maybe try to bank some rounds early on. Uh, he can run all he want. Uh, you know he he got it. You can't win a fight running. Period. You gotta you gotta punch. Uh, he'll figure that out earlier than better. Uh, I know I'm gonna go in there and beat the dog. That's all I know how to do. You know, go in there yeah. and fight. And uh, once I once I once I catch him and he feel that I'm I'm pretty sure he'll get on this bike for sure. But, you know, I, I, I got a plan for that. Well, man, like I said, you always a guy that's going to land some fights. And you're always going to be a guy that's going to get in the ring and try to make it entertaining while still trying to use a bunch of skill and, 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 and a good fight. I mean, a, a, a great fighter to watch. I mean, you never not have fireworks. You never not had things going on in your fight. So, I mean, I would definitely always sit down and watch a fight because you've always been an exciting fighter to me. And, uh, and they're not just saying it because I know you are, you know, or I'm just saying it because of what I see being a boxing fan and being around, you always had some fireworks going on and never been afraid of any action. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a really good fight, but he is a guy who like to get on his bike and go backwards and try to fight in the retreat. I just, I don't think he, you know, I'm not sure what his plan is, but I think at some point throughout the fight, he's going to have to be a man and bang up. I mean, I, I like, yeah, I think so, you know, and, uh, you know, you can't you can't sit there and run all day. I mean, he he's got to he, he can box. Everybody knows that he can box. No, but you got to you got to box and be efficient with it. You can't box and just go around the ring and run in circles. I think that's what you know. Canelo, you know, chased him around for eleven rounds till he stopped him. Uh, Caleb was tired, you know, and uh, you know, I know he gets tired in the later rounds, and, and I grow stronger. Right. Um, so you coming out. So what today is what Wednesday? You know, your yeah. fight is, is coming up here yeah. this weekend. You know, how was training camp? It was good. It was good. You know, I know everybody say it's a good camp, especially when they get to the fight, but this camp this fight was actually good. Uh you being an athlete, uh, you kind of know, you know, you go into games or something. I'm uh, you kind of get light, light injuries. You never a hundred percent, but I feel good. I had, I didn't have no injuries this camp and it was a, it was a good camp. So I, I'm ready to, to showcase my talent to the world and, and make the doubters believers. Yeah. yeah. which and, and interesting. You said that, right. And I know you don't give a crap about this, but you go in as a big time dog uh, mm -hmm. in this fight. And I see you kind of grinning. You're probably like, you know what, Rich, I don't give a shit about that, but we do talk about it on the show when B and I kind of handicap, uh, you know, I, I mean, does, is there a little extra and your birthday's right around the corner. It's Friday. So you'll be 38 by the time you fight. Is there a little more extra juice to kind of shut a lot of people up? Because think about it, plants thinking, let me, to, I've heard him say it. This is just another guy for me, right? Another fight. Let me get through him. Then I got Benavidez. Then I got maybe Charlo, but you're thinking to yourself, Hey man, let me put on a good showing here. Let me shut up a lot of people. And then all of a sudden, boom, I can get myself back into the mix of 168. 
I, he knows I'm not a just another fight. He know I'm not a pushover. He knows all that. He know I'm not. A, I think I heard one time he said I was a tune up or something. And I, and like I said, if I'm a tune up, I tune his ass up. It's no problem. Uh, I'm ready to fight. You yeah. know I'm bringing it. His coach know I'm bringing it. So like I said, I'm I'm ready to fight and show and, and show. Like I say, the non-believers make them believers. Man, you are a, I mean, I don't know how anybody in their right mind would know anything about boxing. Could look at you as just opponent, man, you're a two-time world champion. I mean, and it's just not five, ten years ago either. I mean, we're talking about just right, you know, yeah. right around the corner. So, I mean, I, I don't know if he really believes that within himself that he thinks you're just going to come in there and be an opponent. You know, I don't. Who knows? I just I don't know if he really believed that. He but can't I, be I think I think I think Caleb Plant right now is comfortable, and I'm uncomfortable. I'm ready. You know, you he can say comfortable all you want. This uncomfort gonna make you uncomfortable. So what, what, what do you mean when I, like you say, say Anthony? When you say comfortable, what what do you mean? He hasn't been tested. He's got to get pushed. He's got to have a little. No, no, he's current. comfortable where he's at. Like he he you. fought Canelo. He fought one of the biggest names in boxing, Canelo. Right. He's comfortable. He got paid good. He bought a new house. He had a baby. He he lived, you know, he's he comfortable. I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. uncomfortable right now. Like, I'm really uncomfortable. You know, you get to be at home with your family and, and wife after every tra training day. I haven't seen my wife or kids in two and a half months, man. I'm uncomfortable. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fuck him up bad. Mm. How do you contain that come Saturday night? Because I don't you know, know. <laughs> I, well, that's well, right. I mean, I mean, it, it right now you see a, a lot of it built up in me. But when you get in that ring, it all come together. You know, you you stick to the game plan of what you need to do, uh, and that and and that's just go out there and do what we've been doing in the gym. So I, I'm ready when it comes to when it comes fight time. People who don't realize that I'm coming in here and not playing no games. Well, you know, I wish you luck, brother. I wish everything. I wish I can be there and support. Uh, big fan. Always been, you know, for a long time. Uh, Rich and I, you know, we always uh, talk boxing on this show, man. And uh, we had a chance to interview, you know, a few people. And we always bring up the same thing since we're always talking about this heavyweight stuff. Uh, Rich and I, me and myself, I know we've, we've been talking about the, the best heavyweight in the history of the game, right? Right. I say Tyson Fury. He disagrees. What do you, so what are your thoughts? The best heavyweight to ever do it? To me, Tyson, yes. Anthony B doesn't really put it in context. He is no, a blanket. He, 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 he has everything so, to offer, though. That's why I don't put he it does, in He does, and, and he do. But the greatest is Ali. I can't, you know, that's just not. That's just not a even a, a, a subject right there. But the best heavyweight that's in the ring, Ali was the greatest for in and out of the ring for sure. The best heavyweight, I mean, Kalishko was good too. That Tyson yep. Fury beat, but that was Styles kind of make. I don't, Styles hear that. I don't yeah. want to hear that. He was the old guy. I don't want to hear that. Listen, the old doesn't matter. And style far. and Styles make fight. But Tyson Fury is a different animal. He 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 boxes like he's a lightweight, like he can get on his feet and fight. You don't really see him get too tired too often, and he can punch. Like people don't understand, like that dude can punch. Like he a big boy. If he put that three hundred pounds on you, and you two hundred and twenty pounds, you gonna get tired before he do. That's just the truth, but I don't know. I can't say I can't take say Tyson Fury right off the bat. I can't tell you no heavyweight right off the bat, honestly, because it, it, it's it's too many. It's too many it's great the 70s, man. 80s. Yeah, you got to go back, and it's I'm too not many. not forgetting them. You know, while and, and, and you got to understand, back then too, they fought twice a week or fifteen rounds, three, four or five. Yeah, four or five times a month. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? no, but so I, I know it's, it's I know, so and, different now. But that. But does that make them better because they've busy. No, it don't make them better. It yeah. don't necessarily make them better. But I don't know. I don't got I can't give y'all no answer. I can't how, how about, I take how, that. I take that. Yeah, he's honest because he wasn't yeah. gonna get on the bicycle. I was bringing him back this way. Come forward, man. You know, come <laughs> forward against Brandon. 
about about how about yeah, Wilder? How about Wilder? Uh, obviously, you're the co-feature. How about Wilder against Helena's, which is kind of interesting because it's basically going against a guy that he sparred over the last mm. year. So I, I think there's a reason he chose uh, that opponent that you know has a little confidence coming into that fight. But uh, w- what's your thoughts on Wilder and and this fight Saturday night? I think he chose him for a reason too, but. That's far apart to know Wilder a lot, especially if he was at his camps. Uh, and, and Helena's can hit. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. we've seen that. But Deontay is just a different beast, man. He's yeah, but a, you got to get him fighting he, backwards. You can't, you can't phone boot. Yeah, him but once, once that, once that right hand, right hand. come, it, it, yeah, you, it, you, know, you can about I, cancel Christmas with that one. Uh, Wilder looks great. I mean, I, I watched him train. I watched him spar over the last month. Um, Wilder looks great, man. He, he yeah. looks good. He be moving, you know, nice and you know, the speed looks good. Uh, you know, you know, moving his feet more, and uh, he's not trying to just bury and settle for the right hand. He's you know, look like he's gonna be really boxing. I can't wait to see and, what and he if, he, if he can do that. Be. That'd be that'd be a great, tremendous change in his thing, and it'd be great for him because his power is there. He don't got to worry about power. You got to worry about the basics in boxing for sure. Wilder, like I say, he's a hell of a hell of a fighter, man. That's the hardest puncher I ever seen in the history of boxing. Period. You're never losing, right? A heavyweight, your power goes last. But all I'm saying is, his opponent, right, it, 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 Helena, is, if he's down on the scorecard, right, his mindset is going to be risk to reward. What do I do? Do I try to get inside and risk getting knocked out? Because uh, but you got else? to. What else? That's what, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What else yeah, can you, you do? To. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. Uh, hey, last one for me. You're gonna. You're 37. You're gonna be 38. I, I guess some people kind of forget. You're 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 almost like the elder spokesman of the division, right? I mean, it's We've like been I, a long time. I, 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 I'm a veteran, man. Yeah, but I, it's and, almost. You know, I, I was just talking about that earlier. I mean, like in Campbell, my brother, like we veterans, bro. Like seriously, like. I never thought it'd be here this fast, I guess, for me to call yeah. myself a veteran. But yeah, but it taking is what it, it is. It's as a compliment that you've you've won, you've won titles, you've been there before, you've been through the wards, you've built up the equity, the resume. It's like you're you know, that barbecue mosquito, right? You're you're not going yeah. away. No, no, I don't go away. Uh-uh, we still are here. What what's I'm your here, as long as I, as long as I'm doing it, man, I'm gonna give me, I'm gonna give it 110%. I'm never gonna short short change uh this boxing man because if you do you get hurt and you can't do that what's your message for Caleb plant come saturday night don't run <laughs> ain't no message don't, don't run, run. <laughs> don't run well shit hey man listen if you're gonna fight let's fight don't run yeah that's what it is and that's the name of the game so man listen i, I listen i will i want to wish you luck and you, and you fight it. coming up man I appreciate you coming on with us, man. We're a new show. We're trying to get it going. So, you know, one of the bigger names that that, that has been on, not the biggest name that has been on. So, man, I, de- I definitely appreciate you coming on, man, and showing us some love, man. I appreciate y'all having me, man. It's an honor. And Andy, All right, man. I, I appreciate you coming on and not backing down to Brandon and taking his side on heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but look, because other, yeah. fighters, because other fighters come on and they go, it's not even close. It's Tyson Fury, right? But you get... yeah. <laughs> but you get some guys that come on and go all the way back to the damn 50s. Like, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean fighters, like but, I say, yeah. I can't shoot because there's too many great heavyweights. Man. Yes. Thanks. Honestly, it's too many. Yeah. Hey, well, good luck on Saturday night, Ann. I appreciate yes, you guys. All right, Thank you. Be good, man. Appreciate all right, man. you. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Be well. Right. Um, that was good stuff. Yeah. Awesome, man. And, you know, I'm always, and it's, it's tough for me. Like I'm, I'm very competitive by nature. Like what, what I do with the broadcasting, like I'm, I'm just, you know, you have to have that, that fire, that passion for, right. You want to be the best, right. You want to be meticulous attention to detail, but you also don't want somebody disrespecting your work, so to speak. Right. Or questioning your ability. And, and I take it from, you know, and as a, as a championship boxer, you, as a uh, two-time Super Bowl winner, like when when you have someone kind of question your body of work, it's, like it, that, it's, shit, it's, that shit yeah. rankle me. It's disrespectful. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, 
So, hey, man. I don't think he gives a shit about the odds either. I don't. He's, he don't give a shit about he, that. He just won't go in that thing and fight. I think he's going to have to come out and steal a couple rounds. And I think, you know, as your guy, Teddy, would say, you know, drive him through a bad area, right? Drive him through a bare neighborhood. Push him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Get him backpedaling. Get him up, uh, uh, you know, uh, against the ropes. Maybe start to question that plan. Now, he switched trainers. He's got Stephen Breadman Edwards uh, right out of Philly. Good guy. Knows the sport of boxing. You know, loves the discipline of Caleb. The footwork, the speed, the boxing, the ring IQ. But I think there's something to be said about a guy where people are starting to write him off a little bit. And what yeah, I think he got a. I think he got a. I think he got a tremendous chance to go, you know, to go in and because just for the simple reason, you know, the knockout ratio for Caleb Plant is, is is not great. You know what I mean? So he don't have a bomb. So that 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 gives him even more opportunity to go in. You know, and kind of play around a little bit. Not kind of not play around because you can't play around in boxing. But you know, kind of go in and kind of see what he needs to do by keeping close to him and you yeah. know and, and not being afraid of being caught with a bomb you know no that's a great point because you're not re- like wilder for instance right that jackhammer you come in yeah, you like, can't do that with him you got to watch you got to stay outside and try to right. figure out it, why you get in right you so with certain fighters i can get in because i know there's no threat of you knocking me on my ass right right so uh no it's it's going to be an interesting. Uh, it's going to be an interesting fight. It's a great weekend for boxing, by the way. Haney, Campos, as I mentioned, uh, Shields uh, back in action. Uh, you know, you got a bunch of female fights. You got some young prospects coming up. Uh, Lomachenko. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Uh, fights uh, fairly soon as well. Wild he's tomato Wild- cannon. He's he's not tomato cannon, is he? <laughs> That's what he's been doing. Yeah, but he fought for a title. What was it? His third fight? Yeah, I mean, still. So now you mean you fight for a title, your third fight, and then you then you fight the next five guys, six guys, a tomato can, seven guys. He's fighting Ortiz. He's fighting Jermaine, uh J- Jermaine Ortiz. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked about that yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, I, w- I did wanted to ask you something though. Um we'll, we'll get to the NFL in a couple more minutes, but I know we were talking about this yesterday. With, with, with some of like the great middleweights um, and I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I, I still, because again, think about it. We just were talking 168. You think that division will ever have the sexiness and appeal it did in the eighties? Middleweight, the, the middleweight division? No, because they're all, I mean, no one wants to fight. I mean, I, I, I they, they, the fighters in that division have the ability for fireworks and be in, very entertaining, right? And they have the skill, you know, ring IQ to be able to survive and win a, a fight in, in the decision. I think I think that division has every type of fighter in it that people want to see. I don't know if it's going to be as sexy as it was, uh, you know, a long time ago. Um, but I do I do think the fighters has a lot of ability and. Uh, a lot of potential for some, you know, some some real sex in this though. I mean, you can, you know, as, as fighters and you know, bringing people toward the yeah. uh, division. You know, I, I think they have that. Yeah, because you can make a case. Fifteen of the all-time greats, four of them, you can say were middleweights that fought in the eighties. I mean, Charlo. I mean, he's exciting to watch. Now, yeah, Charlo's sure. Charlo's exciting Charlo, to watch. Yeah. David Benavidez, that guy, you yeah. know, he's exciting yeah. to watch. Canelo's losing the edge a little bit. Triple G's gone. You know, um, I think he's gone. Then you got a guy like uh, Anthony Durrell who could easily come in there and be somebody who can be very, uh, you know, very entertaining to watch. I mean, if he get this win over Caleb Plant, I mean, it does a lot for his career later on in his career like this. Uh, well, listen, I, if, if, Plant's, if Plant is thinking, let me get through Anthony and then I can set something up with some of those names that we mentioned, well, why wouldn't it Darrell be thinking the same thing? Want to do the same thing. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, no, that's good stuff. All right. So you mentioned a couple of things yesterday. I took some notes. I mentioned that we got plenty of time to get in the NFL and Brandon's best and everything with the games. NBA is right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you think it's right now. Are, are you saying the Lakers before? Yeah, right now. Right now, I'm saying the Lakers are the 
the Lakers Nets in the championship. That's what I'm saying right now. The Nets, I just, who the hell knows? Like, they, I, first of all, I'm not a Ben Simmons fan. I ben, get it. He's a freaking. He can play, though. He's a dog. He, he's got, he, he gave up the rock against the land of the playoff game for the short dunk, then decided I'm going to take my ball. I'm going to get off the sandlot. He held the Sixers at bay, held them hostage, forced a trade. Then all of a sudden he couldn't play because his back and his pride and his heart hurt when he was at the Nets. So again, that's a guy I'll never trust. Right. I get that. I understand that part. I, I, I was looking for the Nets to make big, a big, uh, a big push with when they got him. Let me give you the odds. Clippers right now plus 700. Okay. And let's be honest, they haven't had a healthy roster in a long time. No. Golden State plus 700. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Phoenix. And I think a lot of it is because they were able to lock down Aton. Uh, plus 1,000. <laughs> right? What? Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, not just because of him. They, I get they it. I understand. New... I just thought it was funny. That's it. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You're killing me over here. Probably one of the best backcourt tandems in the NBA. Can we start acknowledging Booker as a great player? So that De- Devin Booker is a beast. I think right away. He's a beast. Like, he's, you know, he's... you're so quick to you're so quick to chuckle at me before I get my full thought out. No, Devin Booker is definitely one of the best players in the NBA. It should be noticed. There's no question. All right, fine. Um, where's um, uh, where's Milwaukee? Milwaukee's got to be up on this list. So the best teams in a Western Conference bet on Clippers plus seven hundred, Golden State plus seven hundred, Phoenix plus a thousand, and then you got Boston. Yeah, Milwaukee. I can't Sixers, man. I mean, right now Sixers Eastern look Conference, good. Yeah. Sixers look good. They look good playing together. Uh, they, there's no selfish. I mean, Joel Embiid is the best big man in basketball. I mean, uh, it's not even close. The, the the issue though, the window, right? You're you're wasting this guy's prime. You know, they had to get they had to get production off the bench. They had to incorporate a couple other players with him, and it seems as though they have that. Again, I'm not big on the head coach, but whatever. Boston's plus 600 Milwaukee's plus 650 that's a, that's the a team to be reckoned with as well you know Milwaukee I think I think I think Giannis if you ask me he's the last couple of years he's been on the verge of being the best player in the NBA and I, and I don't see this season being no different it's gonna be yeah. tough to stop him this year and the Nets are plus 700 and again it to me it's contingent upon Durant Kyrie and Simmons on the floor together and get yeah at the same time man so there's no reason to be there's no reason to be hard to play with in the NBA all you guys making a hundred plus million dollars I mean usually you would say screw it I need to prove my point I need a max deal give me the ball then you start bickering but they are all making super crazy guap so it should just be about winning at this point it's not why do you think they take they go to team to team. I don't think they go to team to team for winning. I just think it's, it's no because, because of the of money. Relationship. I just think it's a it's a relationship with a coach. I think that's why. No, I don't think it's for winning. No, man, I, I wholeheartedly disagree. They go not because of coaching, picking up the phone and hey, man, come down on the West Coast and play with me, Mello or Russ. They go because it's buddy buddy. You go in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I can't imagine Patrick Ewing calling up Barkley or MJ or MJ getting on the phone. Hey, Pat, come over here. Or Bird and the Celtics saying, come in over here. Come on, man. I agree. I I agree with you. Those guys wanted what they had. You know, but that's the older era. But people are going to also argue that. The, 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 the players wasn't as talented or as, as big or strong as what they are now, you know? So they might, some, some people th- can you imagine some of those players today? Like how your guy, your guy, Westbrook. Mm-hmm. Wait, you don't think Westbrook could have played in the nineties. I think if you start knocking him on his ass when he's driving a lane, he might, he might, I think he Westbrook is, I, I, I 
can't recall a guy that scored in bunches in his prime, like the way West, it was automatic, man. Like you're talking spurts, but over the course, and look, the triple doubles are all well. I, I, I don't know, man. I maybe Russ, Russ scored when he wanted to. He made sure he got the hard part of the triple doubles out the way first. You know, steals, assists, and sometimes rebounds. He went to he went for two and a half quarters, making sure he got that out of the way. And the fourth quarter came, he got 25, 26 to get his triple double. That's talking about a man controlling his stats, knowing what he want to do. People, people can talk about him as much as they want to. Uh, Russell Westbrook is a dynamic basketball player, and he's gonna and, and he still got juice in the tank. I don't think he's the same player, man. Just like Melo. I mean, those were guys, they were prolific scorers, were they not? Yeah, uh, yeah. But, I mean, it's hard for them to be a prolific scorer when you got you got AD with you and you got LeBron on the team with you. I mean, it's hard. You know, you got your Pat choice. Dev. I get it. But, I mean, I'm but I'm thinking, too, though, if that if that mattered to him, Rich, he'd probably say, you know what, the hell with this shit. You want to bring Pat Bev here, too, along with AD and LeBron? I, just send me somewhere else so I can go be the man. That's not what he's doing. I'm sure he got that power to just get up and lead and say, hey, trade me or or whatever the case is. No, he sat in there with that team for two, now going on the second year. So I don't think scoring bugs him or, just, you know, scoring really means much to him right now at this point. I think the guy just wants to win. You, you think it is easier being a teammate of Westbrook or Durant? It may be easier being, a, and I'm just going to speak from characteristics, from what I see from their demeanors, right? KD doesn't look like he is a aggressive guy. You know, it doesn't look like he's an aggressive guy. Russ, on the other hand, looks aggressive. You know, he ain't really trying to hit nothing crazy. You know, like, you, to, in order to deal with a guy like Russ, you gotta be like, you know what, bro? You got it. You know, like, I ain't gonna argue with you type shit. You know, and Durant just gonna, you know, I guess, I mean, I guess he's just gonna turn blind eye and go, you know, and whatever happens, happens. But, you know, I, I don't know who is easy being, a, you know, being a teammate of. I, I, I think I don't they're know, both but... pains in the asses, man. I think Westbrook is that walking time bomb, but you want that fire. And Durant's passive aggressive, man. I mean, the guy that's like, aggressive, right? He had a burner account on Twitter. Like, come on, you're you're an all time great. You're gonna roller skate into the Hall of Fame one day, right? In the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, uh, MVP championships, whatever. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars and you actually give a shit what somebody tweets about you on social media come on man rich is a respect thing man some guys feel like they need that respect some guys care i think like, that's an I, I i'm telling you different social media that. was so big it was big like it was you know now like it was then when i was playing i mean no telling what i would have said that <laughs> but it's only it if it's coming from an opponent i take that as a challenge if it's coming from some schmuck who's in their basement in the dark, what the hell do I care? It's a challenge anyway, because you got to play against this, you know, because you got to go out and get it done. So it's I, a challenge I, anyway. I get it. I get it. I, I, I mean, I, I just never, to me, I can't imagine, like, to your point, like for boxing, if Twitter was around when Tyson was in his prime. Oh my God. Could you and if imagine? Tyson had access to it. Could you imagine the type of stuff Tyson would be saying to people? He he told people some stuff in their face. You know. And or Rodman. Wanted... Or Rodman. Right. Can you imagine the stuff, man? And then people would have seen Michael Jordan punch Steve Kerr too. <laughs> the people would have saw that as well. Yeah, it's, it's so different though. Like punching... You know, punching a teammate during a practice, the heat of the moment, trash talking, you can live with that. That's like tempers flaring during practice, right? But to say something to a teammate who's off to the side and back and forth and then just casually walk over and knock him on his ass, that's different. To yeah, me, that's, that's, not that's He anticipated that. He wanted to do that. Sure. He was waiting for his out. He was waiting for his opportunity, mm -hmm. which again, I just can't believe. I, I Can you imagine what would Coughlin have done if one of you guys took a swing at each other? Oh, he would have probably been pissed, but it, I have yet to see what he would have done, obviously, because again, yeah, never, 
it's never happened, man. We were so super close, man. It wasn't any of that. Like, I don't know what he would have done because everybody's getting paid money. You can't just cut somebody um, because of that. You can't just say, you know what, you, you, you're you done. Maybe a one game suspension, maybe something like that. But I don't see you. I don't see them cutting anyone for, you know, for, you know, for that. Yeah, I saw you were defending your boy Deion Sanders. Well, okay, <laughs> let me talk about this because yeah, yeah, people are all like people saying all of this different stuff, um, and I wasn't exactly defending him. Like the whole coach handshake, yeah, at the end of the game, that shit. I don't care about that. Like all the dancing that they're doing in Jackson now. Who who is swag? I'm swag. I love that. Like I said, the only part I thought that was a little bit wrong of what what Prime did is walked in their pregame stretch before the game. Your team arrived at the to the stadium late, right? You usually go do this pregame walk when no one's on the field. Your your team arrived late, so you go to do this pregame walk, and just so happened Alabama State is on the field doing, doing yeah. like doing their stretches, you know. And yeah, he do it every week, but he do it on the empty field. You know, I thought that was the only part of that whole thing on Saturday that I think that was just a tad bit out of line. Like everything else, whatever, yeah. whatever about everything else. But as far as the pregame stretch thing, I think that was a little bit out of line. And I love Dion. I will let my son go play for Dion wherever Dion goes. Dion could go coach a team in Australia. I will send my son to Australia to go play for Prime. Right? I love Prime. I've been loving. I've been loving Prime. I've been a fan of Prime ever since he was with the 49ers because that was one of my teams growing up. So, right. I, I mean, I've been a big-time fan of Deion Sanders. I mean, if you ask me, there is no football player to ever put on a pair of cleats that's better than Deion. He's the best football player and maybe the best athlete ever of all time, right? You know, I just think that, you know, it was just just was a little bit disrespectful and out of line for him to walk through this stretch like that. 30 years ago yesterday, he suits up for the Falcons at 1 o'clock in Miami and then for the Braves in Game 5 of the NLCS in Pittsburgh. <laughs> never been done before yeah people also forget remember brian jordan yeah i think it was a defensive back right with atlanta yep. played for the yep. cardinals yep um you know and then obviously Bo, which i mean look if he doesn't get hurt in that 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 uh was it the wild card game against the raiders i'm yep. sorry he don't get hurt that. in that man he don't hurt his hip there the guy could be the best football player ever did you see the 30 for 30 on marcus dupree I did. I talked to Marcus Dupree. I don't know, man. Last year, I talked to him over the phone. You know, um, one of the best ones. I, I, I watch it all the time. I thought it was fascinating that I'm like all this talent, man, and it's almost as though a part of him subconsciously was wishing he didn't have it, or. You know, when they were like, he, it was almost like predestined that he was going to get hurt. It's like, oh, uh, and I remember when he suited up in that preseason for the Rams, because that was the year the Giants went to the Super Bowl and beat Buffalo. And he was their leading rusher in the preseason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They well, that was in. 90, 90, 91. 90, yeah. 89, 90, he suited yeah, up. 90. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. It's it 86, 90. 2008 and I guess 2012. You could oh, say. yeah, no, it was the 90 season. Yeah, yeah it wasn't 86. It was 90 season. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's not that old, right? Yeah, I get it. but um, no, that was fantastic. Shout out to the 86 guys. I'm not saying you guys are old, but Marcus is that old. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. What do you got for your uh five, by the way? And and by the way, uh, we got a nice little pop, a little promotion with our guys with a uh, spooky express. For some of nice. these gambling sites so what do we got for brandon's best so give me the three games i think you kind of did let's kind of read yeah, i did i did i'm going on uh, the vikes versus dolphins not because of the, well, the dolphins defense vikes vikes being four and one uh bills uh the bills chiefs with the chiefs just 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 won a game uh monday night that we didn't think that they were winning came back from behind a uh, great deficit uh Tra travis Kelsey four four touchdowns in 25 yards receiving right uh then you have the cowboys four and one and the eagles what five and oh six and oh uh the so that's so those are my three games man and I'm, I'm 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 gonna go ahead and make my picks here i'm gonna say the dolphins without a quarterback wins this game against the vikings and i'm gonna say the bills over chiefs and uh yep. 
I mean, this is the lesser. It's like kissing years. your sister here, man. This is the lesser of two evils right here, Dallas or Philadelphia. Uh, I, I, I got to go. I got to go with the Cowboys because I want everybody in the division to have a loss and they got to beat through each other. Hey, we got a couple minutes. I, I did want to ask you, you had the roughing the passer penalty the other day on Brady, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, which it wasn't. Um, and then you had um, the play with, um, what was it, Jones the other night against um, Carr, which was bizarre because the ball was loose. It's a fumble. So you got to go for the ball. Like, it wasn't like Slayton in the London game where Russell Douglas kind of twisted him around and then mm -hmm. unnecessary roughness. But I know we only have a couple minutes, but where, you know, and Aikman kind of said it, and I know he's getting grief for it. Hey, take the skirts off him. Um, it, it's, I know they want to over legislate, right, and protect the quarterback. I still, this is me, I still believe a lot of this is because of Tua, okay? And, and what transpired with him. I mean, we know they've been protecting the quarterbacks for years because the NFL yeah. is driven by the quarterback. But come on, man. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, they've been doing it for a long time, man. And two, I guess, um, was was borderline. You know, couldn't 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 or couldn't have been done. Um, that tackle on that sack on Tom Brady, man. It called that rough of the passer. That was that was just uh, uh, that's just absurd. Like that was probably the worst call in, in the last tw twenty years of football. Uh, that was bad, and yeah. you know I know they they they're your marquee guys, the ones making all this money, you know throwing the ball around and your so called leaders. Uh, I used to watch Eli go through hell, man. I mean, we barely used to get any of those rough enough. like like that. Like Eli used to go through hell. He may used to get hit. Like it was just some tough rugged games, but I mean that. That's a, that one was you know was beyond me. Like I saw that, and like my like my son came up like what? And then Monday night, me? like that was a sack. Like are they crazy? Like what? And it kept yeah, the like, drive alive, and they ran out the clock. Monday night, different story. Kansas City eventually won the game, but yeah, still, absolutely. Like, what do you do? Are you gonna replay? I mean, is that because no matter what, their decision is always gonna be in the favor of the quarterback. <laughs> right. So I think we do need a. I think we do need a replay because I think the game happens so fast. In positions and angles, change in football so fast, where these referees can see something and throw a flag and you know not have a chance to really see what really happened. Yeah. So I think I, I think all, okay, all except the blatant ones, be under review for uh, rough, for rough in the past. You know, like the guy with the head to head yep. in the in the. Uh, uh, the unprotected player, yep. the, the crack bats. Yep, yep. You know, they go back and they look at those now. So they, they should do the same thing with uh, rough and the passing. Uh, give me a score of Giants in Baltimore. Giants are a six point dog at home, one o'clock, which as Giant fans, we love the one o'clock kick. I'm going to go 27 21. I think Lamar Jackson gets his. Giants have never seen a quarterback like him, you know, in a minute. So, um, I think I think he gets his, uh, but I think the Giants win 27-21. All right. I, I'm going to say the defense is going to make plays. I'm going to say it's going to be a 23-16 Giant win. They're going to stymie Jackson. They're going to get a couple turnovers. And I think you're going to see 26 again. I think he's going to run. Jones is not going to have to do a lot. I, I love what the front's doing. But I'm going to go with the Giants, man. The big win. 23 16, you like them 27 20. Yeah, I mean, that would be a, a huge win, right? I mean, for us going to be four, four and one, and uh, <clears throat> I think I that would be huge, yeah. absolutely. You hey, know, bro. um, Lamar Jackson, I mean, I, the man had, is at 1400, I mean, he has 1400 yards uh, of of uh, Baltimore's offense, yeah. and it's, I think it's like almost half, uh, over you know, he's over 50 percent. Uh, like, like his completions, uh, man. So he's been, you know, do, he's over fifty percent more of Baltimore's yep. rushing yards. So he's been the offense, you know, playing for a contract. Uh, like all of the attempts he has, he has five uh, interceptions. Uh, three, I think, three hundred and seventy-four rushing yards on forty-nine attempts. Uh, so I mean, it's going to be hard to kind of contain him, but I think it could be done. 
But I think he gets his because what he's playing for, you know, he's going out on the limb playing and playing his last year in his contract unprotected uh, with, you know, with the big deal. So I think he's trying to prove a point to the Ravens and of, of the rest of the team throughout the NFL. Uh, so that's the reason I, I think the guy's hungry. And, I, and that's the reason I think he's going to get his, but I think his team is going to fall short and the Giants right. are going to pull it off and leave five and one. All right. We both like the Giants. Don't forget on IGNYG.TD.Record27 on Twitter, Brandon Jacobs27, myself, Rich Q on Q. Subscribe, like, comment, uh, 27 and Q on the YouTube channel. We will do it again. Special thanks to Anthony Durrell. Big man. Always appreciate it. Sir. Hey, what you got to say? Hey, <laughs> stay tuned for some beautiful fights, some beautiful yes. football this, this weekend. Don't take your eyes off the TV. You know, for the adults that's watching the show, you get, you get your nice adult beverage, sit down and put your feet up and watch you uh, all day Saturday, all, all, you know, watch the fight Saturday night, watch the NFL on uh, this coming Thursday, Sunday, during, you know, during the day, Sunday night and Monday night. You Enjoy go. yourself, people. We love you. Absolutely. We'll do it again next week. Always appreciate you. And again, we appreciate you guys keeping it locked in for 27 and Q with the two-time Super Bowl champ, Brandon Jacobs. I'm Rich Kinnios. Have a good sports Wednesday and a better weekend.